So last year, March 2021, the Welsh government introduced a new highly controversial education bill. Controversial because it ushered in compulsory comprehensive sexuality education for all children from the age of three in Wales with no parental opt-out. It was also controversial because during two public consultations, the majority of Welsh parents said no. Controversial because of what UNESCO's global comprehensive sexuality education looks like, not only in the rest of the UK, but in the rest of the world. And the worry that many parents have as to how the highly sexualized material and the ideology behind it will impact on their children. Now, it's also controversial because it places the sexual and reproductive rights of the child over and above the rights of the parent to decide what their child is taught. Finally, it's controversial because of the cost to the taxpayer uh, in Wales to the tune of hundreds of millions of pounds at a time when the Welsh education is really failing children. So my guest today is Kim Isherwood, a criminologist and a founding member of Public Child Protection Wales, who are bringing a legal case against the Welsh government to remove the mandatory element uh, of this highly controversial bill, which will win the right for parents to opt out of this programme and give the final decision on the content children are exposed to back to the parent where it belongs. Kim, it's great to have you on the show. You feel like an old friend now um, because we've known each other for probably over a year now uh, regarding this campaign. Uh, Just to provide some context, um, as a criminologist, what's your specialisation? My specialisation is child sex abuse, exploitation, sexual harmful behaviour, perpetrators of abuse and institutional abuse. So it's really the dark side of of child safeguarding then yeah yeah and and why did comprehensive sexuality education appear on your radar when it first surfaced from from a professional standpoint from from your academic standpoint what what were the red flags for you so the red flags for me was the encouragement of um early childhood masturbation and consent consent is a huge thing for me anyway anyone that works in the field of sexual crimes or convicting sexual crimes will understand consent is problematic so for me that's always a personal concern anyway but it was the encouraging of children to engage in um like i said childhood masturbation and a sentence a single sentence sexuality education should begin from birth now these quotes were taken from the world health organization document so back then, I was really naive, thinking this has got to be right. You know, it's got to be right because it's from the World Health Organization, mm. but it wasn't sitting right. So I needed to find the explanations for this because in the criminological world, that is, it's, it's predatory. It is predatory. So I'm reading something that, that we refer to as a model of offending. So a process a perpetrator will go through then to have access to a child. So for me, it was really backwards. Mm. then kind of thing you know it it was anything but safeguarding and that's when I started digging further because as far like I said as far as I was concerned the World Health Organization must have been right and I must have been wrong Mm. and because you will question yourself I don't care who you are you will always question yourself when you're reading stuff like this because you don't Mm. expect it to be there so that's what it was for me it was very much a case of it does not sit Yes, absolutely. And and obviously in the UK, CSE or Comprehensive Sexuality Education has become Relationships and Sexuality Education or RSE. Now, so, I mean, what does this look like? Uh, I know the answer to this question, okay, because we've obviously, you know, we, we've studied this. I certainly have done some research in the background on this before. But just for people who don't know, what does RSE look like in England and Scotland and what impact has it had so far because well both on children and parents because this is relatively new to Wales because the bill was only passed last March so children and parents won't have any experience of this yet just yet well what we've actually seen so we've seen a package and it's called um, all about me and so we've taken a little bit of jump now from the early childhood masturbation and we've actually seen less in contents what is referred to as self-stimulation so if you look at the media they will tell you this came from warwickshire council it did not it came from unesco 
It is on their website in multiple different languages. So the so that is for the very small children aged six and under, where it's encouraging, well, it's explaining to children, you can touch yourself, it tickles, it feels good, but please don't do it in the classroom because it's rude, it's not polite. Now, I want to bring this back into a criminological thing here now mm. because my issue with our particular piece of lesson content, which got to 241 schools in England, there is what we refer to a barrier to disclosure. So barrier to disclosure is something that prevents abuse coming to the surface then. Mm. And what we're looking for in very small children will be um, non-verbal disclosures. So with this particular piece, we've got children in the class who do touch themselves. We've also got children that do not do it. We've got children who do it because they're being neglected and is soothed in. And then we've got children who do it because they are being sexually abused. Mm. What we've done now is we've just programmed every single child in our class to look at their genitals, to consider their genitals. And we've also programmed them away from what we would consider a non-verbal disclosure. So that's... That's, you know, that's, that's from the very start. That's from the mm. very start we're programming very, this. Very young. There was not one teacher that I have come across that can point out the barrier to disclosure in that piece of lesson content. Mm. So that in itself is a massive concern. So we've also seen as well, and so the older children, um, we've got things like they are being encouraged to search for pornography online. Yes, I've seen um, that. Again, this is a massive concern. We're being told this is the teaching about the dangers of porn. But again, if we take this back to a criminological aspect, that I have never in my entire life of looking into these things come across a serious sex offender that has not been addicted to porn. Mm. So with porn as well, there's the desensitization to it. So the so the children will lose their the, their gratification towards it you know and yeah. that's why we go deeper and darker again so there's also the addictive aspect of that as well steve and like i said we're told this is to prevent and is to help them and to safeguard them i i beg to differ i would argue that that element of safeguarding lies at the hands of government where they should be providing devices which we have to physically go into to unlock not to lock. So every device should come with internet safety anyway, child proof. That is something that the government can deal with at the click of a button. That is not our problem. It is not the school's problem. It is the education, the government, and, and the criminal justice system's problem, basically. You know that they need to come together to deal with that. You do not, under any circumstance, encourage a child to search for pornography. Well, we know of old what kind of content that uh, children will be exposed to within RSE, CSE, um, across, you know, the UK now. Um, and I think the, the problem is that Welsh parents haven't seen this yet. They haven't been exposed to this yet. They don't know what it looks like, and they don't know what the consequences are. Whereas in England, and particularly Scotland, that's a different story, because there's a huge controversy in Scotland at the moment, isn't there? It's, uh, it's massive. It started with the lesson contents, first of all. And now, as you know, we've got this big thing going on from the councils, the local authorities. And um, I think, uh, isn't it right that the, some of the parents are considering legal action as far as, uh, you know, the, the content of the questionnaire that's being put forward? Well, they're reporting it as a crime. They are mm. reporting it as a sexual crime. And I've looked at, obviously, the criminal justice system in Scotland is different to England and Wales. So I, if it was England and Wales, I could reel off exactly the parts of the Sexual Offences Act that they, they are in breach of. Mm. But when you look at Scotland's Sexual Crimes Act as well, you will see this is this does fall in line for non-contact sex abuse. It's also sexual communication and it is an abuse of trust. So these here's children a, are just going to go ahead and fill in these questionnaires anyway. So here's a question for you then, and it's been something that I've been considering for a little while now. So if a teacher presents this kind of content uh, to a child um, and they're under the age of consent, regardless of age, is could that legally be considered non-contact sexual abuse? If 100%. The, it's 100%. Put, it's putting teachers in an incredibly dangerous position, isn't it? Yeah. 
It is, and this is what, and I'm very sorry, but this is the road we have to go down now. We have to hold individuals accountable for this because they are failing in their duty of care as well, Steve. Mm. When a parent comes to a teacher with evidence and concerns, those teachers should be looking into it. Mm. Mm. You know, so and, and maybe we do have to make an example out of people because this is, by definition, non-contact sex abuse. Mm. Mm. So on the subject of teachers, and we know to, you know, in a lot of circumstances, because this is mandated by government and by the education department, that, that, that teachers have no choice, even if, even if a teacher was... <laughs> Uh, in two minds as to whether this was correct or, or had some kind of moral argument against it, they are obliged to to present this, aren't they? They have no choice. Well, in it's, it's in the Education Act now. Um, they, they are also in Wales, we're going to be inspected. So our schools are going to be inspected. So it's not even a case of, oh, my particular school is not taking part. They've got no option. You're being inspected by the contracts have been signed all over the UK, and we're all headed down the same road. So are the, are the, the teachers that are going to be delivering this, are they trained to do so? Are they capable of doing this? They certainly are not trained to do so. And this is another problem. When a person is told they are trained and they are now qualified to safeguard a child, who is anyone to come along and tell them different? Mm. You know, they, they've got the qualification. They've sat this little course. They do it every year. They are not trained for it at all. If they were trained for this, then they would be criminologists or they would be part of a sexual crimes team. They would have extensive research expertise qualifications within the field. They'll have, they'll have extensive knowledge of perpetrators of abuse as well. That is something that is missing from all training packages across the UK. When you look into safeguarding policies, um, you will also see that teachers are encouraged to look to the parents um, and family situations, they are never encouraged to look within their staff rooms. They are not even informed of sex abuse in schools, even though the Independent Inquiry into Child Sex Abuse has just published a report telling us all is an open secret in schools in the UK. So there are massive safeguarding concerns here. And this is why this is bigger than going to court and, and just stopping it, Steve. This is why PCP was set up, because... We know there's more to this than just stopping the RSE. The system is failing our children. And like I said, it's not it's not a fight to stop something as such. It's a mm. fight to change something. It's a fight to implement the things that's not there, that's non-existent, that's failing our children. Mm. You know, we, we need a system that we don't have adults recovering from their childhood. And at this moment in time, we do have a lot of adults recovering from their childhood. And mm. that's through our, our, our failures. Mm. So uh, you're set to take on the Welsh government uh, in court. Um, how are you funding your legal battle? Um, and how long have you got to achieve uh, what you need? Well, we've, uh, we have to wait for everything to be published. So this is, this is the difficult thing. And from publication, you just get three months. So we're on 44 days now. We are funding this by doing a series of sponsors we're pretty much out there begging you know that's that that's the simple way to put it we're actually begging we are a team of working class people none of us are have money to spare if anything we're we're, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel ourselves to to continue with the campaign but we're pretty much relying on the generosity of people out there. Even people without money are contributing because they're hosting events. So we, we, we're out there and we are hoping that everyone will see this as an opportunity to create case law mm. because this is in 52 countries. It has never, ever, ever been overturned. We usually start with less than contents and end up with this legislation. They've slammed us with the legislation here in Wales first. I don't know why they've done that. I can't, I, I've got no explanation for it, but we've got the more radical side of things, which needs a radical response. Mm. So uh, the, the way I see it is that there's a huge opportunity here to turn this legislation upside down. Okay? Absolutely. If it's done in Wales, you know, one of the smallest countries on the planet, okay, then 
what that does is set the precedent for every other country to fight comprehensive, global comprehensive sexuality education as uh, um, created and promoted by UNESCO to every single school ch child in the world. If we win this, there is, we are setting precedents. We're creating case law. Mm. No, mm. and that is what it's about. There's no doubt in my mind at all that um, if we, even if we don't win this, if we don't win this, but we come out to that court and we've started a movement, we still win us, Steve. Yes. We still win us. Absolutely. You know, because starting a movement is far different to having a demonstration or a campaign. A movement is a massive shift. And that's what we're heading for now. We want other people to see that this can be done. You just need to be brave and you need to be determined and committed. We cannot allow this to come in any other schools. There's enough going on as it is. We have to set precedents for this. We have to push it back. It started with one small group of people, Steve. It has to end with one small group of people. Mm, yes, absolutely. Well, we're certainly going to promote uh, what's happening in Wales where, with uh, Public Child Protection Wales and your legal battle against the Welsh Government, 44 days to go. We're going to, we're going to do a daily countdown. Okay. How can people support you, uh, either uh, morally, financially? Where can they go to, to actually pledge uh, support financially for you? So, first of all, we, we're just in the process of switching um, platforms. So, we have been on a, a, a platform called fundraiser.com. We'll be going on to Crowd Justice, which this is even better for us, Steve, because you can't go on to Crowd Justice without the solicitor. Your case has to be laid out. So it makes it more real. You know, it's um, and the Crowd Justice platform is a global platform as well. So people can go on there and just any causes they believe in, they can they can contribute that way. But while we're setting up that platform now, we're literally at a crossroads. The best thing for people to do is subscribe to our website www.publicchildprotectionwales.org and it's, the, the website is undergoing maintenance at the moment as well it's being updated the information on there was at the lead up to our fight we were trying to prevent it now we've actually got the legislation things need to change mm. but there's lots of stuff coming through the website now please subscribe to the website everything will be sent out through um, email um, yeah, marketing campaigns and things like that that's the best way to keep up to date with us, guys. That's the best way to wait for the time to contribute. But we don't, we're strategizing here, Steve. So whereas before we were looking for pounds, this is not the this is not the platform for that now. This is a platform to show people. So we need to show numbers rather than pounds. And when people see that there's more people behind us, that's when they are more inclined to contribute financially. Mm. So, yeah, the money is very, very important. We can't get to court without it. But the numbers is equally important for to, to gain us more support as one and two, to start this movement. Because we can't forget this movement is just as important as the court case, if not more important, mm. because this could get stopped before going to court. Mm. If we mm. could bring us one city to a standstill, you know, if we could coordinate this well, we wouldn't need to go to court. But at this moment in time, court seems to be our next option. You know, it, it, that's the next step for us, without a doubt. Okay, Kim. Well, uh, the long and short of it is, you've taken on the Welsh Government. Uh, you're incredibly brave. The, the, I think the, the most important thing about all this, okay, is that a win for public child protection Wales in Wales against the Welsh Government is a win for children everywhere, globally. A win for the world. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, I, uh, you know, I want people to appreciate that. I want people to appreciate the battle that you guys are fighting for our children, okay? Uh, but also the global implication that if we win in Wales, we win the world. We can win our children back globally. And I hope people get that message. This isn't just about Wales. This is about kids everywhere. We all care about our children, no matter what nationality they are. But if you guys win, if you get the support, if you get the help, then you can win and this can impact globally. And I, I wish you every success and we will do everything in our power to, uh, to help you and promote your cause, Kim.
Yeah, so this, Steve, this is a real opportunity, not just to stop the sex education, but to improve safeguarding throughout, you know, in our systems, improve the training for teachers. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want it? You know, um, adequate safeguarding and child protection is a difficult job. But if the world, if the whole world is paying attention at once, we can get it dealt with at once, can we? You know, mm. this is not rocket science. They will have you believe it's rocket science. It's not rocket science. No, no. It's, it's no science. There's no science behind it at all, you know. Some people think, oh, those women over there, they're prudes. You know, it's... it's there's a moral fight. Yes, it is a moral fight. Absolutely, it's a moral fight. But it's not just moral, it's right. Yes. It is right, you know. We, we're not just doing this on a whim because it goes against our belief or it goes against something else. It is harmful to children. Mm. Mm. Full stop. And that, and that is the reason we all need to stand up. We can... We can make a better world for these kids, you know. And I think this... I think, you know what? This has to be a blessing in disguise. It has to be a blessing in disguise because if we're all completely honest, we're all failing our children, no matter where in the world we live. You know, um, abuse against children is horrific. The school system isn't really the best place for a lot of children either. And that's because of these curriculums brought in. The pressure put on teachers, they haven't got time to teach our children in the environment they should be. So together, together, this is the opportunity, the only big opportunity that we've got to make this world a better place mm. full stop and i think that's something that we all really want no matter where we come from you know all walks of life no matter what our religion is you know we all want that and i think for that reason we should come together and make it happen absolutely absolutely and hopefully you know we can rescue the innocence of a whole generation of children you know so <laughs> this is the death of innocence Mm. This is absolutely the death of innocence and is saying they want it from birth. So this is cradle to the grave stuff, you know, um, it needs to be stopped. Mm. Mm. Well, Kim, Godspeed, every success. We will be speaking to you daily. OK, we'll be giving daily updates on uh, across all our social media and across the station as well. And uh, from this point on, um, every day we're going to be updating you every day. We're going to be uh, letting people know exactly where we are with this campaign. Because like I said, if you guys win, if Wales win, the world's win. Kim, it's always a pleasure. And it's been great having you on the show. And uh, I wish you every success over the next 44 days. Deadline time. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate the support you've given us since day one. And let's do it. Let's do it, everyone. Let's do it. Okay. Cheers, Kim. Thank you.